I guess the cliché opening would be to tell you that I thought I had a good marriage and was blindsided by my wife's infidelity. The truth is that our marriage had been going downhill for some time. The shock was that my loving wife believed that I would be submissive to her demands and would allow her to humiliate me. For me, it comes down to people mistaking kindness and for weakness. Let me introduce myself and my wife and explain. My name is Kevin Stoffman, I'm 42, and married to Tammy. Tammy just turned 40. We've been married for 20 years with a 19-year-old daughter who is in her first year of college. Our marriage had been going stale for several years. Tammy had become distant and uninterested in our relationship. We still had intimacy, but it was diminishing. I believe that it was turning 40 and becoming an empty nester that sent my wife off the deep end. Unfortunately, it was our daughter Robin who found the first evidence of my wife's insanity. She was home over Christmas break, and on her last day before heading back to college, she needed to use a computer. I was using mine, so I told her to grab the spare one in our closet. I didn't think it had been used since my wife got a new computer for her birthday some months ago. Thirty minutes after I gave the computer to Robin, she came storming into my office. Dad, what kind of kinky stuff are you into? I looked at her puzzled. I mean all the adult videos you've been looking at and what's up with all the holding crap. Robin put the computer in front of me, showing me an untitled folder with a ton of videos. I looked a few and they are all that kinky videos. I can't believe you are into that stuff. How do you know about that? You're only 19, I asked. Come on, Dad. I'm not a baby. When did you get into this stuff? Shocked, I looked at the folder. That is your mother's computer. She's the only one who has ever used it. We continued to poke around on the computer finding other folders. Another folder contained several articles on how to manipulate your husband into becoming submissive. It dawned on me that what we were looking at was several months old. We still had about an hour before Tammy would be home, so I had an idea to look at Tammy's new computer. Robin retrieved it while I powered down the old one. This isn't going to work. She has her new one password protected. I grabbed her hand, walking her into the bedroom that was Tammy's office. Hidden underneath the desk drawer was a sheet of paper. Your mother is not good at remembering her passwords. When she got the old computer, I suggested that she write down all her passwords and keep them in one place. I opened a drawer, pulling out a paper that had the passwords for our household sites. Robin looked at, This doesn't have the password for her new computer. I know. I said, reaching under the desk and pulling out another piece of paper. This is her secret sheet. Like most things, she thinks she is clever in hiding this sheet. I saw her putting it here but never needed to look at it till now. I took a picture of the paper before putting it back in its hiding place. In seconds, her new computer was open with us searching for it. We found more submissive videos and articles on holding. Our search was cut short when we heard the garage door opening. We quickly powered down the computer, putting it back in the spot we found it. The items we found were kinky but didn't tell us if she was doing anything other than watching adult videos. Robin agreed not to say anything on the condition that I keep her updated on my investigation. My investigation was only beginning as Robin went back to school. Robin was convinced that her mother was up to something other than just watching adult videos. She had noticed the same changes in my wife's attitude toward me that I had observed. Tammy's attitude toward Robin was different too, but in a different way. I was hoping that Tammy had just an interest in adult videos, but deep inside I knew it was more. With work and other activities, it was nearly a week before I had enough alone time to search Tammy's computers. It was searching her browser history that I stumbled on her secret email account. Her secret sheet of passwords was not completely obvious as to what the passwords went to, but there were enough clues to quickly access her email account. Lucky for me, Tammy kept most of her emails. Most of the emails were with Mistress B. Mistress B was her self-titled submissive advisor. There was a long string of conversations with Mistress B encouraging Tammy to turn me into a submissive husband. Tammy had explained to Mistress B that I would agree to do most of what Tammy asked and never argued with her. In most cases, she said I would give in rather than argue. 
Mistress B had the opinion that I must be a wimp and would easily be a willing, submissive husband. At one point, Tammy questioned her on what to do if I resisted. Mistress B told her to threaten me with divorce. She said that I would lose everything in a divorce and be living in a shoebox paying Tammy to be with her lovers. I had to admit I was uneducated about divorce law. Certainly I was aware that most men got screwed in a divorce even when they had done nothing wrong. Immediately, I made an appointment with one of the best divorce lawyers in the city. I sat down with Jackie Stone telling her my situation. Her assistant gave me a form to fill out with our employment and assets. She would look it over and have some answers for me in a couple of days. The big smile on Mrs. Stone's face when I walked into her office told me a lot. Don't worry, Kevin. If you do have to live in a shoebox, it will be a really nice one. People should not listen to non-lawyers who don't have all the facts. Your wife is going to have a huge problem if she divorces you. I'm betting her so-called expert didn't even ask what you two did for a living. Your wife's business is valued at close to a million dollars, but the liquid assets are not even half that. We will make an immediate demand for half the value of the company. She will have to find a way to pay you $500,000 or sell it. Her income will be calculated at the time we file, which will be equal to yours, so she will not get any maintenance. I can't advise you to do this, but your house is almost paid for. A large home equity loan put in a trust for Robin's college expenses would shelter that money away from your wife. You both have essentially the same amounts in your retirement funds, so that will be a push. If you decide divorce is the option, we can do this. Is there any advantage to filing on the grounds of adultery? I asked. Not in the division of assets, but we might be able to use the evidence you are collecting to force her into a favorable settlement. I think it would hurt her business if her activities went public. Mrs. Stone agreed to prepare the paperwork and wait for my signal to have her served. We didn't have evidence of adultery other than the emails, but it looked like she was going there. We could use the time to shelter additional money from Tammy's grasp. I updated Robin on what I found and what the divorce lawyer said. You think she's going to try to turn you into a submissive husband? That cheating woman? She can't really think you would go along with that. It's partly my fault. I give her everything she wants. I should stop it now, I replied. Wait, Dad, maybe you should play along. Do you really think she will stop if you put your foot down? She will just hide it, play along and draw her into a trap. Oh, I like that, I replied. I continued to watch Tammy's secret email account. Mistress B instructed Tammy to cut me off from intimacy and be more demanding I do most of the household chores. Tammy was to gauge my response to her being nastier and demanding of me. Tammy was supposed to tell me that if I did just as she instructed, I would be rewarded with intimacy. Mistress B told her to always find faults with my work and to withhold intimacy. My compliance would be the signal that I was ready to be her wimp husband. I thought about standing up to her, but Mistress B told her that if I didn't go along, then she would change plans and humiliate me secretly. Just as Robin suggested, I played along with her plan. I played my part well as the dominant male. I sheepishly did just as I was told. I was so angry with her that I was happy not to have intimacy with Tammy, but acted disappointed when she withheld intimacy. I knew the end was coming near when I read an email that Tammy told Mistress B that she had found her bull. He was a salesman for one of the suppliers of her business. Mistress B told Tammy that she should sample her new bull before springing the plan on me. I had been holding out hope that Tammy would come to her senses before she committed adultery. My blood boiled when I read an email a week after Tammy said she had found her bull. It was to Mistress B. I've experienced my partner in every way. I'm ready to make my husband submissive. Finding the bull's identity was easy. There were a couple of new emails from Stephen Rose. He was thanking Tammy for a great night of intimacy. The last email dated yesterday was telling Tammy how much he was looking forward to putting me in my place. He had thought it over and Steve said that he was excited to humiliate me, and he wanted me, to pleasure him. With some quick research, I found out all I could about Stephen Rose. It was hard to believe he was going to be my bull. I thought a bull was supposed to be an imposing figure of a man. 
If I had the right Stephen Rose, and I knew I did, this man was 5 foot 10 inches, about 180 pounds. I'm just over 6 foot tall at 200 pounds. True, he was 10 years younger than me, but from the pictures I saw, I could take him on my worst day. Steve was a salesman who was a supplier for Tammy's business, and he was married with two small children. I felt sorry for what was about to happen to his family. I watched their email for the next two weeks. Steve was kind enough to take a few POV photos of my wife with him. I'm sure he didn't realize that he had sent me the evidence I needed to prove my wife's adultery and ruin his own marriage. The email finally came. Tammy emailed Mistress B that she was ready to take out her plan. She thought I was ready and her bull was on board. Friday night was going to be the night. Tammy was going to spring her new rules on me before Steve came over to her. Her divorce threat was going to be used if I didn't immediately agree. Tammy even told Mistress B that she had a special gift for me to put me in my place. Mistress B, based on my compliance with all her previous demeaning acts, assured Tammy that I would comply. I had three days to prepare when I learned of the plan. My lawyer had the final draft of the divorce papers ready and gave me a copy. I had already obtained an email address and phone number for Steve's wife. Robin was shocked when I told her the details of her mother's plan, but she loved how I was going to respond. Robin would be on standby to do her part in my plan. Tammy was seated at the kitchen table when I walked in. She was looking a little nervous. I switched on the digital recorder I had in my pocket when she spoke up. Kevin, sit down. I need to talk to you about something. I tried not to smirk. Can I change first? She got in her authoritative voice. No, you're going to sit down and listen. You are not going to interrupt. I sat in the chair, putting my briefcase next to me before nodding to her. We are going to have some changes here, and you will have to accept them. First thing, I'm going to be taking on a lover. He is coming over tonight to have intimacy with me. Your participation will be limited to cleaning me up and getting him ready to go again after he has had intimacy with me. You will continue to do the chores around the house and do whatever I tell you to do. Tammy paused, so I jumped in. Is that it? I asked. No. I have a little present that you will start wearing. You will wear it all the time and I will have the only key. Go ahead and open it. She shoved the wrapped box over to me. Inside the box was a chastity cage. I had seen a few of them in the videos that Tammy had on her computer. I held up the cage. Are you finished? Yes. I know this will be a big change, but you will adjust and do as you're told. Tammy was looking nervous now. I think she expected a different reaction from me. I do want to warn that if you don't agree, there will be consequences. I could help it, but I let out a little chuckle. Now are you done? Tammy nodded. Aren't you supposed to tell me that if I don't comply, you will divorce me and I'm going to live in a shoebox? Well, yes, those are some of the consequences, so you better just go along. Her voice was shaking a little and a little less authoritative. I pulled out my cell phone, sending the pre-planned email to Steve's wife, then hitting Robin's number. Yeah, honey, she laid the law down to me. You won't believe it, but she just gave me a chastity cage to wear. Tammy tried to regain control. Put the phone down. Who the hell were you talking to? I looked at her with a snarl. I better let you go, honey. I have to take care of this. Putting the phone down on the table, I looked up at my wife before slamming my hand down with a loud thud. Never interrupt me when I'm talking to my daughter, I said in a calm but firm voice. Tammy stood there speechless. Good. I have your attention. Let's recap what you have just said to me. If I have this straight, your plan is to have some guy come to our house tonight to be intimate with you. I'm supposed to watch you. I assume that this will continue with me being your faithful old. Oh yes. I'm supposed to wear this cage that only you have the key. The final kicker. If I don't go along, you will divorce me taking me for everything I've worked for and have me live in a shoebox. Is that about right? Tammy got a little of her confidence back, thinking things were still going her way. Yes, that is exactly how it is going to be. 
I picked up my briefcase sitting it on the table before opening it. Tammy, pull out your phone and call Steve. Her confidence was eroding quickly. What? Who is Steve? I grabbed the phone from her hand, punching her code to open it. Just as quickly, I hit Steve's number from her contacts, putting him on speaker. You know Steve, you're bull. Steve answered on the first ring. Hey, baby, how did the wimp take it? Is he ready? Sorry, Steve, but this isn't baby. This is the wimp. I need to ask you a few questions, Steve. When you started with my wife, did you tell her you were married with two small kids? From my wife's reaction, I guess you didn't. More importantly, did you tell your wife that you were going to spend the evening with my wife? By your silence, I guess not. Don't worry, I took care of that for you. I'm sure she will take it very well, and I really appreciate the pictures of you and my wife. I'm sure your wife will be able to use them in her divorce. I know I will use them in mine. You son of a blip, I'll kill you, Steve answered angrily. Oh my, that sounds like a threat to do serious physical injury to me. I reached into my briefcase, pulling out my handgun. Tammy shrieked when she saw it. Tammy, be quiet now. I'm talking to your bull. Steve, are you familiar with guns? I pulled the slide back on my gun. If you are not familiar, that was the sound of a .45 caliber handgun having a round chambered. I've recently wondered what a .45 caliber bullet would do to a man. If you show up at my door, we will both find out. After a few moments of silence, I looked at Tammy, who was starting to panic. Damn, I think he hung up. I didn't even get to tell him that I also sent some of his emails to his employer. Did you know that they have a strict rule against having intimacy with their clients? Sit down, Tammy, you were right earlier. We have some things to talk about. Picking up the cage, I looked at it closely. It was a small. I tossed it to her. Really a small, a goddamn small. There is no way I would fit in here, you know that. That is just one of the many miscalculations you've made, my dear wife. Did you really think I was going to accept all this stuff? Tammy started to stammer. Pulling out a folder from my briefcase, I slid it across the table. What is this? She asked, looking about to cry. It is a petition for divorce. My lawyer, a woman who actually went to law school, wanted me to tell you that you should never take legal advice from an internet woman. Let me give you the highlights. First, you aren't going to take everything from me, and no, I'm not going to live in a shoebox. Let's start with our assets. I'm sure your internet woman told you that you would get everything. That's wrong. We live in a 50-50 state. That means each of us is entitled to half of the assets of our marriage. Did you tell your advisor that you owned a successful business? No, I didn't think so. You will notice that I am demanding half of the business that you built during our marriage. Now I remember that last evaluation for that loan you got valued the company at $1 million. I am demanding $500,000 cash in the divorce. Tammy started to stammer. But you know that valuation was only to secure the loan. You know my company doesn't have those kinds of assets. Oh my, you might have to sell your business. Second thing, I'm not asking for maintenance. Lucky for you, your reported salary from the company along with the company benefits you've been receiving are equal to my current salary. What? You make more than I do and you know it, she replied. There you go again, listening to some internet woman. You see your salary is calculated using what you receive from your company along with the benefits like a car, trips, and whatnot. A shame you will have to sell it to pay off your debt to me. You son of a blip, you planned this, she replied. No, let me stop you there. You planned this. I'm just reacting to your plans. How's your plan working so far? Tammy was crying hard now. I don't want a divorce. Isn't there a way we can work this out? Work this out? You are crazy. You intended to put me in a cage. I don't know what happened to cause you to lose your mind, but I'm done. Just so you know, I've known about your little plan. It just proves my point that you believe that kindness is a weakness, so I will fix that for you. I will no longer be kind to you. I will treat you as poorly as you have treated me. Tammy was crying. Kevin, I'm sorry. I was looking for something new and got caught up in the excitement. Please, can we just forget all this? I see how wrong I was to force you into this. 
You wanted excitement. I'm going to give it to you. This is going to be so exciting. Going to divorce court. It's going to be so exciting for you to tell your family what a cheating woman you have turned into. Finally, it's going to be so exciting for you to have to sell your business to pay me off. Look at all this excitement you're going to have. Tammy continued to argue with me that she was sorry and didn't mean for this to turn out this way. She had been crying for over an hour when someone started pounding on the front door. With the loud pounding, I was pretty sure I knew who was at the door. I grabbed my .45 before going to the door. As I got to the door, a voice yelled through the door, Open the door, you son of blip! I backed away from the door, pulling out my phone and dialing 911. Yes, I need the police to respond to my residence immediately. My wife's boyfriend is at the door threatening me. I don't know if he is armed, but I am. If he comes through the door, I'm going to shoot him to protect myself. I put the phone down, leaving it still connected to 911. Steve, get away from my door. I've called the police and they are on their way. Steve was banging on the door harder now. The loud booms made clear he was trying to break in. I'm going to kill you. I was tempted to unlock the deadbolt to let him break in and shoot him. Before I could do that, I heard the sirens coming down the street. Through the door, I could hear the police yelling at Steve to show his hands and step away from the door. When he didn't cooperate, I heard one of the officers announce, Taser deployed. We found out later that Steve's wife lost it when she got my email running to her father. Her father lived next door, so he was there waiting when Steve drove up. Steve was barely able to escape with his life before he drove back to my door. I noticed large dents in the side of his car after he was arrested. They looked like baseball bat dents. Too bad his father-in-law didn't catch him before tried to break into our house with a gun, might have saved him jail time. The incident with Steve helped me get a restraining order against Steve, though I wouldn't need it till he got out of jail. I threatened Tammy with a restraining order if she didn't move out. I knew that no judge would grant it, but she didn't. Tammy moved in with her parents kicking and screaming the whole time. She kept wanting to talk, saying that she didn't want a divorce. Tammy got a lawyer who insisted on a face-to-face -face meeting to work out the details of the divorce. Mrs. Stone told me to be ready for her to attack everything in the divorce petition as the lawyer she hired was, in Mrs. Stone's words, a real scumbag. While he would talk loudly, she said he wasn't very bright. I was not to let him intimidate me. As expected, Tammy and her lawyer tried to talk me out of the divorce. She tried acting all sweet and innocent. Honey, this was all a big mistake. I thought this would enhance our marriage. You have to believe me that Steve and I never had intimacy. I didn't cheat on you. I just stared back at her, not saying a word. Her sleazy lawyer spoke up. Mr. Stoffman, we are willing to forget all this nonsense and forgive you for making baseless allegations of infidelity against Mrs. Stoffman. But if you insist on proceeding, we will be countersuing for slandering Mrs. Stoffman's good name. I laughed, looking at my lawyer. You said they would try this? Mrs. Stone opened one of the folders and slid several pictures to Tammy and her lawyer. I think these will prove differently. This shows you pleasuring him. I guess that isn't cheating. This one shows him with you from behind. I guess you could say that isn't you, but I'd know that back anywhere, including that little mole on your butt cheek. Oh, here's one of you riding. Steve takes nice photos, doesn't he? Did my future ex-wife forget to tell you I have these pictures thanks to her would be bull? I paused, then looked right at Tammy. I'm not stopping the divorce. You can fight all you want, but I'm done with you. I pushed another photo to her lawyer. Here's a picture of the cage she wanted to put. No, I will not forget or forgive. Tammy and her lawyer started whispering. It was apparent that Tammy had not told him that Steve had taken pictures of them. Things were getting heated, but all I could make out was Tammy telling him, He said he had pictures, but I didn't believe him. I had my eyes closed. I wasn't watching him while he was with me. Mrs. Stone suggested we take a break for the lawyers to confer with their clients. Mrs. Stone and I laughed as we left the room. When we returned, Tammy had a different look on her face. The sweet and innocent look was gone. Her lawyer stated, 
We are going to demand counseling. Mrs. Stone had told me to expect that. I told her I could sit through how many sessions they could throw at me. In the event, we can't convince you to end this after counseling. We need to talk about the division of assets. Your plan for splitting assets is completely unacceptable. Tammy's lawyer pulled out the folder containing our property division. Your demand for $500,000 for Mrs. Stoffman's company is absurd. We need to have an independent evaluation of the business before any numbers are discussed. You know my company is worth maybe half that, Tammy said, looking at me. My lawyer looked over to me with a grin. She opened a folder, pushing a stapled stack to Tammy. Mrs. Stoffman, I think you will recognize this document as a loan application for your business. If you will look at the last page, you will find your signature and a paragraph that you were signing under penalty of perjury. You mailed this to the bank after it was notarized. You verified that the worth of your business was just over $1 million. Based upon this application that you signed, the bank gave you a loan. If you are now saying that the value of your company that you put on this application was not true, that is very troubling. Not only would you be admitting to perjury, but because you use the postal service you have committed mail fraud. I know your attorney does not specialize in criminal law, but I'm sure he knows that the feds take mail fraud very seriously. Well, Tammy, maybe it is you who will be in a cage, I said laughing. Tammy went pale, turning to her attorney. They argued for a few moments when her attorney announced the meeting was over. A week later, I was shocked to find Tammy standing on my doorstep. Tammy looked rough, her hair was a mess, and her eyes looked like she hadn't slept in days. Please, Kevin, we need to talk. I opened the door for her. Didn't we do that the night you planned on making me a wimp husband? I led her to the kitchen table. It all went down. What do you want to talk about, Tammy? I can't do this, Kevin. I was wrong and stupid. I'm losing everything, including my mind. Robin won't talk to me. Every time I call her, she says I'm a cheating woman and hangs up. I'm going to lose my business and you're trying to put me in jail. My parents are angry at me. I heard my dad telling mom that I was a cheating woman and wanted me out of the house. Steve's wife came by my parents' house telling my mom she was going to kick my back. Sounds to me like you are getting just what you deserved. Isn't it exciting? I asked. Tears were streaming down her face. You really wouldn't put me in jail, would you? It's not me who will put you in jail. Like all things, your actions will put you there. Wasn't it you who was going to put me in a cage? Seems like the key is in the other hand now. I can't understand how you ever thought I would accept that. I'm sorry. I got caught up in the excitement of what I was seeing online. That woman told me you would enjoy it. She said the fact you took on the household chores and didn't complain signaled that you liked being dominated, Tammy answered. Or maybe that I'm a nice guy who wanted to make his wife happy. Tammy, we're wasting our time. I'm not backing down. I would hate for you to take my compliance as a sign that I wanted to be a wimp. I suggest that you drop the demand that we have counseling and you find a buyer for your business. She fired her attorney and hired one less sleazy. The new attorney told her she was in a losing battle. He advised her to cut her losses. Two months later, we were back in the same conference room at my lawyer's firm. Tammy looked as bad as she did when she showed up at my house. She looked completely defeated when she walked into the conference room. Mrs. Stone told me that Tammy had a contract to sell her business. After paying off her loans, she would clear only about $400,000. Their initial offer was for half. We rejected that offer and started off wanting it all. The meeting was to finalize the financial details of the divorce. Tammy's lawyer cleared his throat, pushing a folder to my lawyer. My client agrees to your latest settlement offer. Mr. Stoffman will have sole title to the marital house. Each party will retain their respective retirement accounts. The bank accounts were split 50 to 50 and will stay that way. The final item is Mrs. Stoffman's business. There is a contract on the business for $400,000. Once Mrs. Stoffman receives the funds, Mr. Stoffman will receive a check for $320,000. I'm assuming that we don't need to put Mr. Stoffman's agreement not to bring up the unpleasantries of that loan paperwork in the settlement agreement. Mrs. Stone stood up. No, I don't think you want that in writing anywhere. 
All we need to do now is file the signed divorce papers with this settlement. I think we are done here. I felt a little sorry for Tammy as the tears were running down her face. She looked up at me. Can we have just a few minutes to talk? I looked at Mrs. Stone, giving her a little wave that I would agree to talking. The other walked out of the room, leaving us alone. I'm so sorry, Kevin. I know that I have no chance of winning back your trust, but can you please help me with Robin? Our daughter won't have a civil conversation with me and won't agree to meet with me. When we do talk, she calls me horrible names. What did you expect? Did you think she would support you putting me in a cage and taking on other men to have intimacy with? There is nothing I can do to change her mind. You will have to work this out yourself. Tammy put her head down, shuffling out of the conference room. I so wanted to ask her how she was handling all the excitement she brought on herself, but that would be piling on. I had done enough. And so, we've reached the end of today's story. Was it what you expected, or did it take a twist you didn't see coming? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on OP? Thank you for joining us in our tales where revenge is served piping hot. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more stories that guarantee your satisfaction. Stay tuned for the next one to satisfy your appetite for revenge. If you're under 18, brace yourself. It's not for the faint-hearted.